Hi, Steve here. This is another video on my series in creating generative art. Uh, the last video we had an introduction to Perlin Noise. In this video, we'll be using Perlin Noise to modify a grid art project. We worked on this project in the IF video, and we're going to change it so that it's using Perlin Noise in a number of different ways. So the first thing I want to do um, I'm using the same size for the grid spaces as I am for the sizes of these objects. I want to change that so the size of the objects is a little different. Let's just start by making size 2 equal to size 1 times 0 0.8. And then we're going to change these to size 2, size 2, Oh boy, I got a lot of them. Size 2, 2, 2, 2, and 2. And they should all shrink. Very good. I also want to be able to rotate this triangle. So let's do push, translate, rotate, pop. So we'll put that maybe here. We'll go push and then uh, translate to the XY position. Then will rotate and I want to be able to rotate by 90 degrees so we're going to do pi times 0 0.5 times floor random 4 that should give us rotations of 90 degrees after all of this we're going to wind up popping then we need to change these instead of x y this is going to be 0 0 this will be 0, 0 as well. This, instead of the x minus that, it'll just be the minus. And the same with this. We'll get rid of the x and the y and the y and the x. And this will be just 0. Uh, I think that'll work. Let's try that. There we go. Now we've got the triangles being rotated in different ways. Awesome. Let me duplicate this. So we'll call that Perlin Noise Grid. So what are we going to do for Perlin noise? Uh, let's add a res 1, and we'll put 0 0.003. What are we going to change? Well, we've got several things here that are being picked randomly. Uh, we have colors. So instead of picking a color randomly, let's try uh, n1 equals noise x comma y excuse me x times res 1 comma y times res 1 uh, we're going to add 0 0.033 to that and then we're going to map that let's say uh, call equals map n1 from 0 0.3 and 0 0.7 to 0 comma 5 but then uh, we need to floor that so that when we grab a color it's a integer and not a decimal and then we can get rid of this so now let's see what we're getting an error oh I got a 0 0.33 so here we go we got uh, colors that are using Perlin noise and we've got a nice distribution of colors here. Let's hit play again. Now, what about that size? The size 2 is just size 1 times 0 0.8. We move this down. Let's put that here. Size 2 is going to equal something. Let's have another noise value, a separate noise value for that. So we're going to have res 2 equal 0 0.00 five and then we're going to have n2 and actually let's just copy this and i'll copy this as well because we can just use that mapping so n2 is going to be noise x times res 2 y times res 2 uh, the color instead of color and this is going to be n2 here actually so the size i said in my histogram stuff that we actually want to use 0.1 and 0.9 here, not 0.3 and 0.7. Uh, so the size 
is going to be, let me think, we want this to be percentages. Actually, you know, 0 0.1 to 0 0.9 would probably be good. So let's just get rid of this and we'll make size 2 equal to size 1 times n2. And we don't need any mapping. So let's try that. So now we have colors and sizes. We have areas of small objects and areas of bigger objects. Let's do something else with noise. We can affect the rotation with noise. So we'll do a res3 equals 0.004. And our rotation is right here. Let me copy this down. Down to here. We'll change this to n3. This to res3. This to res3. Uh, the color we're using n3 here. So let me think, the rotation is, we want a number between zero and four, and then we're gonna floor that. So then we're gonna rotate by pi times 0 0.5 times whatever this is. Uh, I'm calling it color here, let's call it something else. Maybe ang for angle. So that should result in this Perlin noise creating different 90 degree angles. Let's hit go. Now it might be difficult to tell. Let's make this a little bigger. We've got number across 10. Let's make number across 20. Okay, so here you can see triangles that are straight up, they're pointing up. And then over here, we have several triangles that are pointing to the left. Okay, I'm saving that uh, link in the video description. One more thing I want to mention, I'm not going to go into this in detail because it uses WebGL 3D. We haven't gotten to that yet, but I'm using Perlin Noise for this. Uh, you can see this is bumpy. It's sort of like a Minecraft scene. Uh, we've got a landscape here, and this is a height map using Perlin Noise. There are also clumps of trees here that are using Perlin Noise, and I've got the color changing. This is a darker green here and a lighter green here that is also using Perlin noise. And one more thing to mention, uh, you remember that there is a random seed that you can use. There's also a noise seed. So we'll do noise seed, say put a thousand in there and we get this. And if I hit play again, oh yes, I forgot about the objects. I could have done another uh, Perlin noise to choose which objects are being chosen. But if you notice the colors, let's just concentrate on the colors. The colors are the same because the Perlin noise has a seed in it. And I could put in random seed, uh, use the same number, and then we'd get the same results over and over again. One more thing I wanna say, there's something called pixel density. Uh, how many pixels fit on your screen and different machines default to a number of pixel densities. The Macs and iPhones, I believe, default to a pixel density of two, whereas PCs uh, default to a pixel density of one. So it's important that we set the pixel density. So we do pixel density two, and that will ensure that each person sees the same thing. Because if you don't set this and yours defaults to pixel density one and someone else defaults to pixel density two, you're gonna wind up seeing two different images. This might not be true if you're just placing random circles, but if you're using Perlin noise, it's definitely gonna be true. That's everything I wanted to share about Perlin noise for now. Next video, we're gonna look at Perlin noise flow fields if you liked the video, give it a like. Comments are always welcome, of course. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.